Howdy everybody. Um, it's been a long time since I've recorded a video. Uh, I still suck at them. Um, I'm going to try to keep my off-topic commentary to a minimum here. I've kind of uh, recorded this video uh, a number of times now, but hopefully this one will come out good. Uh, I thought I would make a little tutorial of how I made this uh, spherical helix shape. Uh, you know, it kind of looks like a, some kind of a spring or something. I wanted to draw a shape like this, but I couldn't figure out how to uh, quickly. Eventually, I obviously did. And when I searched Google, I couldn't, I couldn't find a tutorial. So, you know, hopefully this will help somebody out here, out there, I mean. Um, what I thought I'd do is I'd just run through the... Uh, history of what I did and then redraw it from scratch you know I'd say basically if you know what's going on by the time I get to the end of this just turn the video off and uh, move along you know I think it's gonna be about 20 minutes so uh, you know don't don't watch longer than you need to all right so I'll start with a, a sphere shape um, not rocket science so far. This is obviously my base shape. The shape could be something else. You know, you could have an hourglass or, you know, maybe some kind of like a, a stepped cylinder of some kind that might mimic, uh, you know, just some kind of uh, two-stage spring or something. On this, uh, based on the cylinder, I create, whoops, um, a plane. Um, the plane is used as a basis for this helix shape. The helix is then used to create this kind of, uh, basically a screw. It's uh, just a single surface, a single 2D surface uh, that's wrapped around uh, following the, uh, the helix path. Um, it's a little weird that this plane is showing up here, but I have a plane at the end of my helix, which I use to create the um, cross-section curve. Let me get rid of this sphere. The cross-section curve for this, uh, I think they call it path extrude or swept boss. So the second plane is just for the uh, cross section. Let's get rid of that. And uh, once you create that swept boss, then you're uh, left with this sphere here. All right. So uh, if you got all that, you know, hopefully hit like or whatever and move along. But let's make a new one. So I'll do a new part. I'm assuming. Don't need to narrate or whatever you want to call it, what I'm doing here, but I'm uh, going to create that sphere as my base shape. When I uh, dimension arcs, I like to um, I like to get diameters when I can, if they're a, a section of a circle or whatever. So I like to dimension this before I cut it. Um, because obviously if I came back with a uh, smart dimension tool, I would then get a radius here. I believe you can change it, but you know, whatever. Um, as I mentioned, the second thing I'm going to make is a plane. So I'm going to make a point along the, uh, center of the sphere, um, which will be the second reference point of the plane I create in a second. Um, I hope that mostly makes sense. And I make that point offset from the top by 0.5 millimeters. Okay. So here's my uh, cross section or whatever. Um, boss base. There we go. Sphere. Okay. So let's make that plane. 
I have a button here for plane. Uh, I use it enough that I, it warrants making uh, a dedicated button. Otherwise, it's uh, underneath reference geometry here, plane. I try. I want to try avoiding too much off-topic stuff, but let me show how I made this button real quick. Um, let me get rid of it first. And to get rid of buttons, hold Alt and just click and drag the button off of the toolbar. When you uh, release the mouse button, your uh, that command button or whatever will be gone. To put the button back, what I like to do, uh, there's probably a couple ways, but I think the best way is to go up into the search commands option. And you may notice the icon here. If you have some other icon, you can change it with this drop down menu here. So you can also search, I don't know, files and stuff. I don't know. I never use anything except commands. So select commands and search for the option you want. Oops. <laughs> there it is. There's three things you can do from here. You can either just click it and you'll start creating a plane or what, you know, whatever command you click on, obviously. You can hit this little uh, pair of glasses here. And uh, I'll, I won't be moving the mouse right after it clicks a click. And it kind of moves the mouse for you and shows you where that command can be found. Um, I wish it went so far as to move the mouse cursor down to here and open this little menu. But, you know, it doesn't. If the uh, command is not on any of these tabs, it'll even bring the mouse from over here, like open the insert curve and you know select your point at the uh the command in there too the third option is you can use this uh the search results here to create the button so to do that you just grab the icon from the left side here out into your toolbar and drop it where you want it all right so let's make it so the plane I want my helix to be running along this axis, top to bottom. So I'm going to make this reference plane parallel to the top. I can grab this uh, and move it around. I guess I can use these or whatever. But instead of my second reference point being a uh, offset distance, I want to use that um, point that I created earlier. There it is. Uh, what? Okay, I think normally if you don't change that distance, like I was playing with these, that will just work. But I guess uh, you know, if you get this error like I did, switch it to parallel. Okay. The last thing you'll want to do when you're creating a plane is change this normal. Basically, it doesn't matter too much um, in practice, but... Uh, you know, if you want your drawing to be slightly better, may as well fix the normal, make it correct, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the normal is what it considers to be the, you know, quote, top of the plane. And uh, being a plane, it only has two sides, so the only other option is the bottom. And you actually see the uh, difference in the color of the plane here. Top is blue, and bottom is kind of... Now, dark blue or gray. Why that matters is uh, you can go up into here and uh, have it show you the normal of a plane. I'll do that in a second. So this is correct, but if it's incorrect, you just hit this flip normal button. Okay, so now this is the top of my plane and that's the bottom. And what's cool about that is I can click the plane. I can go into this uh, kind of, I guess it's called view orientation menu. And I can choose this command here, normal to. And that'll show uh, whatever planar surface that you've clicked on uh, straight on. So you can, you know, draw on it uh, more easily or whatever. Okay. The uh, next step is to get a helix going. 
Helix is under features, under this curves menu. Um, the Helix needs a base uh, curve. So I guess if you don't have a, a sorry, uh, Helix needs a base circle. It needs a sketch with just one circle in it. I normally draw this circle first and use this option two right here. Select a sketch that contains a single circle. But I figured I'd do it this way just because uh, it kind of works with the flow a little better with the uh, you know order of operations that I mentioned at the beginning. So I want to select a plane, planar face, or an edge on which to sketch a circle to define the helix cross section. So I've got my plane, I select it. I kind of wish it said somewhere to draw a circle. I don't believe it does. Maybe, maybe it says it down there or something. But all you got to do now is draw a circle. Um, since we want this helix to be around this sphere, uh, let's let's uh, define it that way. So I want the center of my circle to pierce the center of the sphere. All right. That helix, um, it doesn't have to be, but it works best if it's larger than your base shape. So you know, since my sphere is 25 millimeters in diameter, let me give the circle a diameter of 30 millimeters. Since uh, starting that helix automatically entered the sketch when I exit it, it will then continue with the helix creation. Uh, I don't know where it got these default values, but they're all jacked up. So the first thing I see that's wrong here, at least for my drawing, is going in the wrong direction. It's going up instead of down. So to fix that, just this little checkbox here, reverse direction. The second thing I notice is that there's far too few revolutions. I want it to be, uh, you know, looping around quite a bit. So I can see the revolutions here are set to one. I, I think 12 looks pretty good. Nope. Now it's way too long. I want my uh, helix to end. Uh, I know it's 24 millimeters down, but basically I want it to end with the same offset to my sphere as how it started here. And it, it's not required to have the same offset. I just want it to encompass the whole sphere shape. Um, so I want it to be, you know, symmetric or symmetrical. Um, I forget if I mentioned this before, but uh, if you have this plane meet up with the exact... Um, edge of the sphere. This procedure I'm gonna that I'm going through doesn't quite work right. Uh, it kind of gets a little messed up, so I always have a little bit of an offset here. Um, I mentioned I want it to be 24 millimeters. I'm sure you guys are way ahead of this, but that's because the diameter of the sphere is 25. I have a half millimeter offset here, and I want a half here. So obviously the uh, remainders. 24 millimeters. So I noticed that um, the only option I have that I can change that would um, change the height is the pitch. And, uh, you know, I guess I got 20, 24 millimeters to cover, 12 revolutions. I can just make a pitch of two. And I can know that that's 24 millimeters tall. And it actually tells me here height 24. Uh, I think uh, a better way to do this is to define the height by changing the two definition points of the of the helix here. So I want to do height and revolutions. And now it's uh it's filled in this value because I already essentially had it. So 24 millimeters going down, 12 revolutions. The last thing I see is that it's starting at 225 degrees. What that's, re that's referring to is this point here, the start of the helix. So if I kind of move this around, you can see that the start is moving. I personally like to start it at 90. 
Um, I guess that's because 90 will make it coincide with the front plane. Uh, that is, of course, assuming that your sphere is on the, um, the axis of your sphere is on the origin. Um, and why I would want it to uh, intersect or whatever with the front plane is so that I can draw my cross-section curve there. Uh, it's it's a little easier to just use this existing plane, but it's not quite as perfect, so that's um, not the way I'm going to do it here. But let's leave it at 90. Actually, you know, let's put it at some stupid angle. It's maybe 9. All right, so it's almost there, but it's not quite. Okay. So the next thing I need is a straight line coming from this point here and going toward the axis of the helix, but uh, not quite meet it. So I know this point is on this plane. So I select the plane, and I want a line, select line, and let's draw that line. Okay, and let's do that normal Q thing I was talking about. There we go. Okay. Uh, you know what? This normal two might um, go to your active sketch as well. That's kind of cool. Anyway. Um, I know I want this line to be pointing at the center of the circle. So I select the line, select that point that I had before, and I make it coincident. And now, no matter where I move this line, it's always pointing toward the center. All right. Now, at this point, to match up with that point right there, and I believe if I, if I just take this and try to snap it here, it just won't work. So what you got to do is select the point, hold control, select the helix, and do this pierce command. And since we know this point's right on this plane, we know it's right at the end. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how that could possibly be better, but that's how it is. And I like to make my uh, drawings fully defined, so let's uh, give this... Actually, hold on a second. Okay, I think I mentioned this a second ago, but basically this uh, line works best if... It does not actually meet that center point. Um, the farther out here that you can get, the better, uh, probably. But I just give it, just as long as you have a little bit of space, it draws pretty well. If you have it meet the center, it just seems to have a kind of a problem drawing the screw. And oddly enough, even if you have it go past a little bit, that draws Ooh. okay. Center bed, too far, okay. Too little, even better. Let's define this. Whoops, I don't want it to the center. There we go. Okay, I'm making this bad boy 12.5 millimeters, which um, you may recognize as the radius of the circle. The uh, relationship there is just mostly coincidental. All right. Yay, drew line. All right. So let's make that surface. So if you don't have the surfaces tab in your toolbar up here. Just right click on any of the toolbars and choose surfaces right here. And I have a check. That's why it's shown. If I check sheet metal, you get the sheet metal menu or tab, I should say. All right. This is swept surface. What's a path curve? Whoops. A profile curve and a path curve. And there's our screw shape. Okay. Um, the next bit is I need that intersection curve. Basically, I'm just going to copy where the sphere meets this screw right around this edge right here. Um, the intersection curve is considered a sketch command. I've added this button here. 
but uh, it's uh, seems to be default underneath this convert entities button. This intersection curve is going to create a 3D sketch. But so far as I can tell, once you've started a 3D sketch, you can't create an intersection curve or I don't know, maybe you can, but this is easier just to do it this way. So intersection, I'm going to go intersection between the screw and the sphere. And you can select multiples here. It does its best. And OK, there's our curve. And you know what? Actually, you can't hit this button right now. So I'm a liar. OK, this is the only thing we're interested in drawing here. So we can exit this 3D sketch. All right, so we got a lot of stuff here we don't need. Let's get let's hide it. All right, so I'm just down to one unhidden thing, this 3D sketch. Okay, so when we drew the helix, we put it off on this stupid angle. So to draw the um, cross-section curve, we can't just use one of the default planes. Where are they? Oh, here we go. Um, you know, I can't use the front plane. Can't use the right plane. Doesn't quite meet up. And obviously the top plane isn't going to be of any help. So I'm going to create a new plane at the end here. Oops. A uh, pretty cool tool or, uh, you know, option is you you can use existing sketches as your references for a plane. So if you select a sketch, it'll basically put that sketch, I believe it's perpendicular. Whoops, I mean put the plane perpendicular to the sketch. Uh, since this sketch goes in every direction, this plane ends up being kind of randomly placed. Not quite on this point, but if I make the second reference a point on the sketch, it makes that plane perpendicular at that point. Okay, I mentioned this normal thing again. This is where this normal makes a little, uh, more of a difference. I consider the um, cross section to be coming from this direction. So when I draw the cross section, I want to be looking from here. Not here. Doesn't matter that much, but all right. So cross section on this plane, it's gonna be a circle. I want the circle. This one you can just drag right onto the point. But I like to use the pierce command again. Something's kind of cool is if you choose the the center point and then select this curve down here and choose pierce. It'll move that circle down here. Let's delete it. So I want the pierce to be up near the top there. It moves it right to that end point. Um, I don't know why that didn't work, but here we go again. I did do a one and a quarter for the diameter of that. Okay, so we're going to do that, uh, what is it, swept boss base profile. Obviously the circle and path. Obviously the spherical helix. There we go. In under two hours, just we've drawn one spring. Pretty cool. So there it is. Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, I'm thinking about making another video or kind of mess with this to make it more easily modified. Because if I go in and change the size of my circle, you know, let's make this 50. I'm not getting a full sphere anymore. I'm getting just like a section. Um, so I'm not recording that video tonight. So hopefully within the next, <laughs> no promises. So hopefully it, it happens sometime. All right, laters.